Back again, here is now by request, Minarium. I couldn't really find a better chart for this, except for what you're looking at right now, but it should do. So I have some pre-labeled numbers, and I, it's just a matter of positioning it as to where to put it. So here's a little bit of a maybe a explanation how one could maybe label this. I remember in my beginning days of Elliott wave counting, I used to say, oh, this is wave one, wave two, three, four, five, boom, I got it. Well, you got to remember that wave one and wave four cannot overlap. Clearly, the peak of wave one here overlaps. So that's not going to work as a impulsive, correctly labeled motive. So what I would then say is, okay, wave one is here, assuming there's no other data be beyond this point in time. If this is small wave one, wave two, so let's start like that. That'll make this first sizable peak wave three. And wave four. So from here, although it's not very easy to tell, it was probably a zigzag wave two. The rule of alternation between wave two and wave four requires the probability of wave 4 to be a more complex correction. And just by the wiggles and squiggles and zigzag, you can just, just see how complex wave 4 was and how simple wave 2 was. So think of it as an alternation between simple, complex, complex, simple, between wave 2 and 4, based on the rule of alternation. So now you might say, okay, I have wave one, two, three, four. If this is therefore has to be five, and what kind of five is this? This is an extended fifth. Here you go, another one. But yet, I haven't seen extended fifths. on sub-daily counts. Mostly on daily counts, not time frames less than dailies. Okay? So extended fifth. Very nice. Again, unlike stocks, where the th third wave is the longest, has most likely extended cryptos has the fifth wave as being the usually the longest and thus extended. You see the same pattern of extended fifths in commodities as well. So if you look at this again, one, two, three, four, five, the other rule of Elliott wave impulse is that Wave number three can never be the shortest. So here, even with the fifth being the longest, the count here shows and follows and adheres, abides by the rule that wave three is not the shortest. So this is an impulse. One, two, three, four, five. You might be scratching your head as to, well, gee, what do I do with these two things, the bottom and the peaks? Well, remember the rule. Every five-wave motive that adheres to the rules is followed by an ABC correction. So if that's the case, I could label this as an A, label this as a B, and this as C. 
what kind of a flat correction is this? Where the peak of the wave B exceeds the prior peak, and the lowest point, the bottom of wave C, well exceeds the bottom of A. So you have A, B exceeding the fifth peak, and C exceeding the bottom of A. That's called an expanded flat. Now, here is another difference between cryptos and stocks. I'm noticing more and more often the frequency of expanded flats in cryptos, both at daily and sub-daily levels in time frame, to be pretty frequent. And I'm very surprised by that, but very intrigued as well. Because in stocks, an expanded flat is not that common. One reason as to why this might be happening is, so far, there is no massive manipulation of cryptocurrencies like the manipulation of stocks by the central banks and what's known as in the U.S. as the PPT, Plunge Protection Team. They manipulate the markets by buying options, call options usually, in the range of billions of dollars. Imagine someone coming in with an unlimited credit card buying 40, 50 billion dollars of call options, index call options. When the market is tanking, they're trying to spark and ignite a reversal. They know they can't buy up the whole market. Now those kind of manip manipulations stretches and pulls the waves and therefore modifies the waves. It doesn't necessarily change it. It could delay it. It could modify the length of time, but overall, an impulse is impulse, no matter what. So the lack of manipulation in cryptocurrency is pretty significant. And that's one of the reasons why I think I'm seeing wave five extensions and more common occurrences of expanded flats. So what do I do here? Well, I can say I count some mini, micro, one, two, three, four, five waves here. Okay, let's try that. I'll label that one. I'll label this two then. Well, this can't be three, <coughs> because if that becomes then four, that overlaps with one. And this is where a lot of the novices kind of become stuck, as I had quite often been stuck myself. This is what you call nested one, two, one, two. So if this was one, this was two. This must be the start of three, but it is nested within the first two waves. So this is subordinate subwave to an ongoing wave three and smaller wave one. Then here. Could say wave two. Wave three. Greater confidence and confirmation will be given if the prices can break out of this upper resistance line. And I'm hoping someone somewhere by now will be seeing a pattern right there. And what do you know? Small left shoulder.
right? The right shoulder. And the head. This pattern would look well if prices bust out and breach that resistance line above it, like that, to perhaps complete wave through subwave three of three, so to speak. Okay, so I hope that gave you a lot of information regarding what I'm thinking, the difference between cryptos and uh, stocks, and also the rules that one needs to use, at least abide by, to be able to set up an impulsive motive type of wave, the type of correction as well, and where this Minarium price might go. But again, the caveat is keep an eye on the Bitcoin bear. It's got a way of pulling everything down with it. Okay, as always, I wish all of you massive profits. Thank you for listening and watching.